What's happening guys? Silent Mike, Super Training Gym, Mark Bell's Powercast, Reebok One checking in. Today we're going to go over how to increase your squat. First we're going to go over kind of warm up and mobility, a little bit of technique, some periodizing and programming, uh, and then also accessories to help build up that squat. To warm up for the squat, I'm a big fan of the hip circle uh, or any kind of band you can get, but I believe the hip circle is the best because I like its resistance and how it doesn't um, break down or actually snap. Uh, I throw it around my knees, I'll walk forward, I'll walk backwards. I'll also grab a, um, a regular band, like a rogue fitness band, throw it around my neck with the hip circle. Do some good mornings. I'm basically just trying to get blood uh, to my lower regions, uh, my thighs, my hips. Also activate my glutes. Using the good morning um, with the band and the hip circle will allow hip extension and also external rotation of my knees, uh, which are kind of the two main movements of your uh, hips and glutes. Something as simple as an air squat for sets of 20, um, a goblet squat, or any kind of dumbbell squat, front loaded, uh, can help get into proper position for the day. Otherwise, I just like the barbell movement. Uh, I'll grab the uh, straight bar, squat it, pause, squat it. Oh, good morning with the regular bar as well. What you can't forget about the squat is it is it is a full body movement. Uh, it involves much of your upper body to keep that bar stable and to help you get tight. So I'll also do uh, a bunch of face pulls, pull aparts, even an overhead squat with the band. So kind of in a face pull position, go and get a full squat if you can. Um, it's just kind of uh, warming up your shoulder capsule, getting your traps ready, getting your wrists ready, your elbows ready, get a little bit of blood into your body uh, so you can get into the demanding position that the squat requires. Going on into technique, um, the squat is a very complicated lift because uh, it has so many joints and balls from your ankles, knees, hips, and then shoulders with holding the bar and upper body. Um, first, obviously, we have to start with the bar. Uh, there's a lot of debate and talk of high bar, low bar. If you haven't been squatting, I'd say one to maybe even three years, just put the bar where it's most comfortable on your back. Uh, beyond that, you can start to wiggle around and, and focus more on getting that bar in a, the perfect position for your leverages, um, which for most people, most powerlifters trying to lift the most amount of weight, uh, will end up being a lower bar position. Biggest things though, is we want a really tight back, just like a bench press or any other lift, we want to squeeze our shoulders back, our scapula back, um, gripping the bar even and tight, squeezing your back as tight as you can, uh, and then placing that bar either uh, on top of your traps or kind of lower onto your rear delts and mid traps. Because there's so many variables uh, with the squat, we're not going into an in-depth technique here, uh, but the basics are we want to squeeze our back as tight as we can, take a big breath filling up from the bottom of our gut up, filling our stomach, our obliques, and our low back with air as much as you can, and then we want to squat uh, I like to say simultaneous with your knees out and hips back. This allows a place for your hips to travel and the bar to hopefully travel in a straight line over your midfoot. The mid, uh, the low bar, as I mentioned before, often helps you lift more weight because it's lower on your back, closer to your hips, and allows that straight bar path over your midfoot. To find out what works for you, it's just going to take a lot of practice because everyone's shin bone, uh, femur, their thigh bone, uh, torso. Everything's going to be different lengths, different mobility, and so you got to find out what stance width, uh, what bar position, and also how far back your knees, uh, your hips travel and your knees travel forward work best for you. Going into programming, uh, there's a million ways to get strong. A million people do things a different way and have squatted a lot of big weights, but what's worked well for me and a lot of athletes I worked with is squatting anywhere from two to three times a week, and then just rotating uh, intensities throughout that kind of medium heavy light day. Unless you're preparing for a meet or to test your one rep max, I like to train within the 60 to maybe 85% range, maybe going into the 90 here and there. If you're peaking for a meet, obviously we'll go more into the 85 to 95% range getting into a meet, but we're just talking general how to build the squat. Because the squat is such a 
complex movement with so many joints and so different for everybody, I think frequency is important, uh, maybe even more so than the other lifts, uh, because you need to grease that groove and figure out that path over and over and just practice the movement. The higher the frequency, the more often you do the movement, the more practice you get with the squat. Basically, we'll have uh, kind of a strength day, a hypertrophy day, and a speed day or power day. That's kind of a light, heavy, and medium. Um, for the strength day, uh, you could do something like a three by three or a three by five at 85% anywhere from 80 to 85 percent on my hypertrophy day uh, you could do anywhere from three to five sets eight to 12 reps uh, something like the 60 to 75 percent range for a speed or power day uh, we're going to do less reps higher sets focus on moving the bar quickly and our form maybe you could do anywhere from six to 12 sets of one to three reps 60 to 75 percent as I mentioned, there's a million ways to get strong with your programming, uh, but one thing that is uh, known around the world, especially if you're not picking for meat, is accessories are important and building up muscle and your weaknesses will help. Here are some barbell movements that I think help a lot of people. Personally, I've made a ton of progress just using the low bar squat competition lift for myself, uh, but I'll throw these in here and there, but I think these are very important for a lot of people. Uh, my top barbell movements are just the pause squat, simply pausing in the hole with a little bit less weight than you were using for your working weight, and then exploding up, pausing anywhere from one to five seconds. Uh, make sure you don't bounce in the hole. I see a lot of people go down and then bounce their way up. That's kind of taken away the reason why we're pausing down there. We want to hang out in areas that we're weak in. Often people aren't weak right in the hole, but right out of the hole. So if we pause in the hole, we'll learn how to accelerate through that weak point. Another one is a high bar squat if you're a low bar squatter. Uh, that simply is going to allow you to uh, learn how to brace your core, keep your core and chest more upright, and overload your quads, which are obviously one of the main movers in your squat. Something like a front squat is a great movement as well. You'll see I have to cross my arms, but if you have the mobility to get kind of that front rack of a weightlifter, it could be a great movement, once again, for your back strength, your general core strength, and overloading those quads. Beyond the basic barbell movements or the accessory barbell movements, um, there's a bunch of little movements that are gonna help with the squat. Having more muscle in general helps with the squat. So any kind of back row, chin up, pull up, even shoulders, somewhere more to rest the bar on is gonna help you in the long run. Uh, but something like a reverse hyper, a GHR, and then any hamstring movement I'm a big fan of. So whether that be dumbbell stiff legs, even a leg curl, leg extension, leg press, anything like that. Uh, typically for myself, I'll do the GHR GHR a lot, three to four sets, 10 to 15 with all my accessories, um, and go closer to failure because uh, they're less demanding on the body than the main squat. Hopefully that helps you guys. Just a couple tips from me on how to make your programming, your technique, your warm up, and your accessories on the squat. If this helped you guys, please share it, like it, subscribe. That's it for me guys, enjoy. Let's go! Oh!